What if you could increase the production of your own natural tears at home with an easy to use device? Well, what I just described is possible through something called neurostimulation. In today's video, we'll discuss neurostimulation for dry eye past, present, and future. And I'll try to convince you why it's something you should consider if you suffer from aqueous deficient dry eye syndrome. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. Welcome to Eye School. I'm your host, Dr. D. The theme of Eye School is lifelong eye education, so I always invite you to let me know what you're learning and request videos about new topics. My analytics tell me about 95% of my viewers are not subscribed, so if you stumble upon this video while searching for dry eye information, you are in the right place. Go ahead and hit that button before you forget. A big thanks today to Dr. Paul Karpecki. A great deal of the pathophysiology information in today's video comes from an exceptional article he wrote for Review of Optometry in 2015, and I'll make sure to link that article in the description below. All right, iSchool pupils, let's take a look at today's topic, neurostimulation. So neurostimulation is an at-home dry eye treatment that you might not have heard of. It's an activation of the nervous system for therapeutic means. You may have heard of its usage in pain management, specifically related to like implantable devices, but recently neuroscience technology has emerged in the dry eye space that's ext extremely effective at helping patients produce more of their own tears. So scientists have discovered that the trigeminal nerve, so the trigeminal nerve kind of comes in and innervates the ocular surface and also plays a role in other facial innervation, but the trigeminal nerve plays a critical role in ocular surface health and symptomatology. So we know that the parasympathetic nervous system by way of the trigeminal parasympathetic pathway is controlling tear film homeostasis. So that means there is nerve control of the way that your tears, the tear balance, is regulated. And that is controlled through innervation of what's called the lacrimal functional unit, which is the cornea, the conjunctiva, all the structures that secrete your tear film components. So yes, the big one you think of, your lacrimal glands, but the meibomian glands that we talk so much about in the goblet cells as well. This can most easily be accessed through the nose. So, and in fact, 34% of basal tear production is due to sensory stimulation from inhaled air through your nasal passage. So believe it or not, when you're just walking around breathing and air is passing over that nerve within your nasal passage, that's stimulating a nerve that causes tearing in your eyes. When nasal neurostimulation hit the research scene, investigators were not sure if the tears generated would be quality. So many thought that neurostimulation would generate reflex tears, and reflex tears are very different from basal tears, and they don't have the same composition as basal tears. Some also, also thought that it might only stimulate the lacrimal gland or increase tear volume by increasing aqueous without the other components that are needed for a healthy tear film. So that's the thing, right? We want to improve your aqueous production of tears, um, but we also want to produce more mucin and more of the lipid layer of your tears because as we've talked about before on this channel, a healthy tear film is not just water. Um, it may seem like that, but it, in fact, there's a um, very specific homeostasis that needs to occur. Your tear film is full of proteins and anti-inflammatories, and um, there's a lipid layer, and so all of these things are necessary, and we wouldn't want to be doing a treatment that only stimulates one instead of all of the aspects of tear production. However, increasingly, the evidence is suggesting that neurostimulation via the nose affects all parts of that lacrimal functional unit, which I mentioned has involvement with, I mean, the lacrimal functional unit is all of those, those aspects of tear production. And so therefore, neurostimulation can increase your natural basal tears over time. Essentially, we're applying energy to peripheral nerves on the sides of the nose, and you're sending a signal back to the brain 
to tell that lacrimal gland and the lacrimal functional unit to make tears, secrete your oil, um, stimulate the production of mucin, which is kind of the sticky part of tears. So let's talk about neurostimulation, past, present, and future. So first I have to mention True Tear. I don't have an example of it, so I'm gonna put it on screen next to me. True Tear was the first prototype, the first device on the market, um, an intranasal tear stimulator. So you can see in the picture, there's these two little probes, and yes, those have to go right up your nose. So um, this is no longer on the market, but it did activate the nasal lacrimal reflex by delivering small electrical currents to the sensory neurons in your nose. So that would temporarily increase tear production and it was designed for home use for at least two minutes and up to 30 minutes per day. Um, studies did show with that device that regular use over six months did result in statistically significant increases in tear production and a reduction of dry eye symptoms. So here's the thing, clinically the device worked, but it was never something that patients really grasped onto or felt really comfortable with. It was kind of a hard thing to um, to sell, so to speak, or to get people to um, buy in on because it was sort of scary looking. I mean, how many people want to shove this thing up their nose for 30 minutes a day? So our current model of neurostimulation is called the iTier 100, and I do have a prototype model to show you. This device is non-invasive, and it's actually applied to the outside of the nose to activate that trigeminal parasympathetic pathway using a sonic frequency rather than an electrical type of current. So studies with this device do show a decrease in symptom scores, an increase in baseline Schirmer score, which Schirmer measures how many tears a person makes, so that's a very important measure for basal tear production that we talked about. and. <clears throat> The safety and comfort of this does seem to have a favorable risk-benefit ratio. So recent studies were performed using it twice a day for 30 seconds on each side, and the studies have shown an increase in tear production immediately after stimulation, but it was also seen at each visit, so measuring at 14 days out and 30 days out with the device as well. Um, as with anything, there were some adverse events, but they were minimal and included a 1-2% to rate of lightheadedness and or dizziness. This also tends to cause sneezing when you use it. I personally sneeze really bad when using it. Um, and I think one of the smaller outcomes too was migraine headaches, so triggering a migraine. And it actually did do that for me the first time that I used it. So who can use the eye tier 100? The actual studies looked at severe dry eye patients, but it can be used much, much earlier in the disease and in just about any patient really with dry eye. Long-term contact lens wearers, those with autoimmune disease, and anyone who has had refractive surgery. There's only a few contraindications, so if you have nasal polyps, you get significant nosebleeds, um, pacemakers, metal in your nasal area, or even migraines can be a relative contraindication. So this thing is not live right now. It does actually require a prescription from your doctor. They run in the range of, I believe, $150 initially, and then you have to pay for the prescription monthly. Um, this actually does turn off for 30 days. So this was a demo device that has already expired and I can't show you how it works, but basically this thing right here just vibrates very quickly. And you want to find the spot between the hard part of your nose and the soft, and you just click the button and apply the vibration to your nose. Now it can tickle, it makes a lot of people sneeze or sort of crunch up their nose. And, but you can feel water coming right away or tears coming right away. So the device does buzz a little bit and that's normal. When you hit the right spot, you can kind of feel like it's tickling your nose and I always sneeze. The goal is to use it for 30 seconds on each side, but you'll likely need to work up to that length of time. There's no insurance coverage at this time for the iTier 100, but you can use your HSA dollars toward the device and in early 2021, like I said, it's about $150 and refills each month are $50.
Now for the future of neurostimulation, I recently heard about something very exciting, a nasal spray. So Oyster Point Pharma is the first to tackle this pathway using a pharmacological approach, and it'll be a preservative-free spray that contains a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor agonist, and basically that's stimulating that same pathway we've been talking about. Those little receptors are found throughout the peripheral and central nervous system, and so this company is finding a way to make a, an inhaled version of neurostimulation. Nasal neurostimulation is an entirely different mechanism than topical medications that are targeting inflammation. So it has a really great potential to be an alternative first-line therapy in eyes before significant inflammation occurs, and also as a complementary treatment to topical drops. What I'm referring to is that most of our dry eye medications tackle inflammation, your sequa, your restasis, you know, you, certainly your steroids, but this is not working in that same way. And so there's great potential for it to be used both in conjunction with other eye drops, but also um, as an early first line therapy before we've got inflammation present. There's no substitute for natural tears and a healthy natural tear film, both of which are protecting and lubricating the eye, improving ocular comfort, and helping you maintain consistently clear vision. So our current option for neurostimulation, the eye tier 100, does reduce signs and symptoms of dry eye, and it increases your actual basal tears over time. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. That is it for today's lesson. I hope you learned something new. Remember, learning is lifelong, so make sure to stay tuned in in the future by subscribing. I'm continually updating my videos as my understanding evolves, and I wouldn't want you to miss a thing. I'll see you next time.